You're listening to Wild About Arizona, the official podcast of the Arizona Game and Fish Department. And welcome to Wild About Arizona. I'm John Treeweiler with the Arizona Game and Fish Department. Volunteers play a critical role in supporting the mission here at Arizona Game and Fish of helping us conserve and protect more than 800 wild species that call Arizona home. As we talk about volunteers today, Beth Coiney is with us, our volunteer coordinator with Arizona Game and Fish. Beth, thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. Excited to talk about volunteerism. This is exciting. So first of all, tell us about uh, your role here at Arizona Game and Fish. You're obviously uh, the person kind of who oversees all of our volunteers and our volunteer opportunities. My role as volunteer coordinator is to support the department volunteers. So we have volunteers that work with programs and we have volunteers that support activities or events. So I um, assist with software to track volunteer hours, which is important for funding purposes for Arizona Game and Fish. Um, I provide program support to um, our different programs, whether it's OHV, boating safety, hunter education, or specific field work like our regional volunteers. Um, So I'm really just here to to oversee and make sure that our volunteers are safe, that they're having fun, they have the equipment and the um, skills that they need to work in the field and that they learn something and also um, have a great time doing it. You're a busy person. Yes, (laughs) Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. <laughs> we have a lot of volunteer programs, and I'm fortunate to have a lot of really great help in the field. So I couldn't do it without the 20 plus um, program admins and then all of the biologists and regional staff that work with volunteers as well. So as, as I mentioned, volunteers, they really play a pretty critical role in what we do here at Arizona Game and Fish. Just kind of explain how crucial uh, our volunteers are to our mission. Definitely, they are vital to wildlife conservation. And a great example of that is in um, the last couple of years, they have uh, donated hours to the agency that would be the equivalent of 35 to 50 full-time staff members. So, and that's just the recorded volunteer hours that we have tracked and accounted for. I'm sure that there's hours that we haven't captured. So that is equivalent to as many as 105,000 volunteer hours during the course of a year. And those volunteers play a critical role in extension of our resources. So um, for example, we utilize volunteers to check water catchment levels in the field. We use volunteers to support the commission-owned ranges and the range here at headquarters, Ben Avery. Um, We utilize volunteers to, as citizen scientists in the field, um, to capture data on wildlife populations. So there's a lot of things that we wouldn't have the resources to do if we didn't have people willing to donate their time on behalf of the department. Is that pretty average, over 100,000 hours each year? Yes, and it's extraordinary given the pandemic that we've been in in the last couple of years and able the ability to keep volunteers in the field safely um, because they're able to physically distance and and really continue the work. So, you know, we definitely average over 100,000 hours in a, a calendar year, and, um, you know, there are opportunities to even extend that further. <laughs> okay, we could surpass that <laughs> yes, number even more. Definitely. <laughs> but who makes a good volunteer? That's a really great question. So a good volunteer can be everything from the person that lives next to one of our wildlife areas and assists us with picking up trash and is passionate about, you know, keeping a environment natural for the wildlife species to a volunteer who is retired and looking for something to do in their spare time and has a lot of time to donate and is passionate about, you know, a particular project, a particular um, resource that we provide to the community or um, wildlife conservation. So I think passion is the key theme that I would say as far as volunteers and um, volunteers that have a skill set or want to learn about something. I mean, it's a great way, you know, if you are, uh, you have a a desk job during a day, but you really want to get outside in your free time, there's definitely an opportunity for just about everybody. Um, The other thing is youth. 
youth opportunities are extensive. So, you know, if we um, we work with students, uh, scouts, uh, organizations that want to learn about wildlife conservation. So there's a volunteer and learning opportunity that go hand in hand. And when it comes to like training or experience, what type of a, I mean, do they have to have any type of background in wildlife education or conservation or any type of experience in that? Or if they do, that's great. If they don't, that's no problem. How's that work? There are a wide range of opportunities. (laughs) So you can come to us and say, I'm really interested in volunteering and I don't know what I want to do or if I have the skills to do it. And then we also, you know, on the other end of the spectrum have former employees, um, former employees of partner organizations like U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service or one of the federal land managers that have a lot of experience in the field and want to continue working after they're, they've retired. So there's a broad spectrum. Um, one thing I will say is that the department offers training to volunteers that is the same training we train our employees with. So, you know, if you're looking to learn a skill, whether it's learning to you know, drive a vehicle safely um, off highway, or if you want to learn, uh, you know, about how to check and repair water catchments. There's a, a wide variety of training available for the volunteers. So when I retire, I can keep the podcast as a volunteer. You could, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we can make arrangements for that. <laughs> Thanks, Beth. Thanks for keeping me around. Um, talk about, I know you've kind of already touched on some of the different projects that that uh, volunteers do out there. But there's, I mean, from the water catchments and some of our commission-owned properties, but there is really a long list of the various projects that volunteers work on. Can you maybe highlight some of those projects for us? Definitely. There is a wide variety of opportunities. And, you know, some of the volunteer opportunities are one-day events. So um, Keep Our Deserts Clean just was a partner in a cleanup Um, event out at Robbins Butte. We have uh, the city of Avondale and the partners that are engaged with the um, Base Meridian Trace Rios Wildlife Area and there's a cleanups that happen there regularly. So those are you know one-day events that individuals can engage in. Um, We also have some um, ongoing projects like our Adopt-A-Ranch project where we will help private or public landowners with fencing issues. Um, So we might be uh, removing old fencing, which is potentially harmful to wildlife or doesn't allow wildlife to pass through corridors, to adding wildlife appropriate fencing to certain areas, which helps keeps OHV vehicles out, but allows wildlife to safely pass under or over the fencing. Water catchments, we have a lot of interest in our Water for Wildlife and Send Water programs, and we do have many volunteers that support those programs. Um, The volunteer opportunities there are things like taking your OHV out to check a water catchment level. Um, And then some of our volunteers go through a more extensive training process where they become four-wheel drive certified and they're trained to haul water into the field. So they have, you know, 500-gallon trailers on the back of a truck and um, they know how to fill those trailers and how to safely um, get out to those water catchments. So those are just some of the opportunities. Uh, I would also be remiss if I didn't mention our extensive education programs. So we have boating safety, paddle sports education, OHV education, hunter education, trapper education, (laughs) and our youth scholastic programs, which include the Scholastic Clay Target Program and the National National Archery in Schools Program. So, I mean, there's a huge range of things that are available. And on top of all of that, we work with partner organizations that provide, you know, great opportunities within our community. So the Outdoor Skills Network, Volunteers support a lot of the um, events that occur within the Outdoor Skills Network through our partnership organizations. And that might be the um, Arizona Elk Society, the Arizona Mule Deer Foundation, the Turkey Federation, Quail Forever, um, one of the nonprofit partners 
that operates um, the commission ranges the th- uh, throughout the state. So the list is can go on and on and on and on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a lengthy list. It is a lengthy list, yes. <laughs> and I know that our partnership organizations, like you mentioned, they're also really critical in helping us with our volunteer opportunities and just with the overall mission of Game and Fish. Yes, they play a key role. And, you know, we couldn't do it without the engagement of those partner organizations. And, you know, we have um, some a wide variety of partners. For example, um, the Autobahn has a uh, Christmas bird count, which occurs every year. And that is coming up here in December and January. And, you know, the information, the scientific data that's obtained from that, and that's been going on for many, many years, is valuable to the department and wildlife conservation. And it's those kinds of opportunities that really, you know, are things that we couldn't accomplish on our own. Well, and I was just going to ask that, that the volunteers, they add a lot of value to what we do here and not just value in the sense of kind of a monetary word which we already talked Mm -hmm. about but value as in helping us get work done that we otherwise really wouldn't be able to do right a great example of that is um, the volunteers that support our regional offices so we have our wildlife managers that are out in the field and you know they have equipment that breaks um, they might have a need to have some, get to get something to a field quickly to help with a project. Um, and volunteers, you know, they are there as a resource for those regional staff members. So they provide a wide range of support. Um, sometimes it's transporting a tortoise that maybe um, was found on the side of the road in Yuma and needs to make it here to headquarters to our tortoise adoption program. Um, sometimes it is you know, helping make sure a vehicle gets to a project site. There's many things that volunteers do to extend those resources that make it easier for employees to um, fulfill their job duties. I mean, it sounds like there's really kind of an opportunity or a, a program for just about anyone that wants to volunteer, whether you like maybe helping out with construction, doing some fencing, whether you like OHV riding, you can drive out and check catchments for us. I mean, really sounds like there's opportunity no matter where you go. Right, and we haven't even talked about some of the opportunities <laughs> like uh, volunteers who assist with uh, habitat builds. So, you know, we're uh, coming up on the holiday season here and you have these beautiful trees that are in your home and then they leave your home and what do you do with them? Well, a great way to recycle them is to build fish habitats with our um, aquatic staff. And so they will actually take those trees and um, place them strategically within the lakes at the bottom of lakes so that they become a home uh, for fish. So there are just so many great things you could do. You could also assist at one of our hatcheries as you know, providing support with construction and maintenance and um, cleaning fish runs and and doing all kinds of different things. So, um, and I also, I want to make sure that I mentioned to you that we are looking to the future of wildlife conservation and our volunteer opportunities as well. So we have university liaisons at ASU, NAU, U of A, and other universities throughout the state who work with the future biologists um, and wildlife rangers uh, supporting you know their educational process by providing volunteer opportunities to higher education students as well and and going back to the the Christmas trees which we were, yes. were talking about because that's a really cool program that a lot of people I don't think know that we do and it's you know something so neat um, especially you know after you know, you're done with your Christmas tree instead of just taking it to the curb or, or whatever, you know, donating it to the department. And then we take those trees and use it to build fish habitat. That's so cool that people probably don't realize that even happens here. Yeah, I mean, that's just a great recycling opportunity and it's a great wildlife conservation opportunity. And the best part about that particular opportunity, in addition to how it impacts wildlife, is that it's a family event. So any age is welcome to join us on that volunteer opportunity. And, you know, that's really important is that we're looking, you know, 
to engage our entire community. So everybody from youth who maybe are, you know, learning a new skill or learning about wildlife conservation um, to somebody who maybe has experience or a lot of time and wants to almost have a second career or learn a different skill set from what they did on a, a day-to-day basis in their, their career before they retired. So we, uh, we can have grandma and, you know, grandchildren at the same volunteer <laughs> event. <laughs> well, okay. So come, uh, you know, come December, come Christmas time, whenever you may be listening to this, um, you know, think about that. Your, your, your Christmas tree could become a uh, habitat for fish. Yes, and definitely. Everybody could be involved. Um, so speaking of getting involved, Beth, if someone is out there listening and says, wow, that sounds really cool. That sounds like something I might be interested in. Mm-hmm. That sounds like something you know, a friend of mine might be interested in, what is the best way for somebody to get involved, get engaged with volunteering with us? That's a great question. So there's a couple of different ways that a volunteer can engage with the department. Um, The first is to go to volunteer.azgfd.gov or just go to our website and look for the volunteer link. And that'll take you to a software tool that we have where our biologists and wildlife managers and program managers um, have their upcoming volunteer opportunities. So that's one easy way it's accessible on your mobile device or from a desktop computer. Um, If you're not tech savvy, but you wanna send an email to us, you can email volunteer at azgfd.gov and we'll get you in touch with a staff member if you share you know what you're looking for or if you're just say hey i have saturday's free and i want to volunteer what are my opportunities available and then you can also engage with our staff members in the field so stopping by a regional office um when they're you know have office hours or uh, coming to one of our ranges and expressing interest to volunteer Uh, You know, if you happen to see uh, one of our volunteers in the field working on a project, ask them about it and about their experience. So those are some of the the best ways to get in contact with us. Well, and I've been to our site, our volunteer site, and it's pretty cool. I mean, it's pretty nice. I mean, and I'm impressed by it, right? (laughs) Well, and it's I think it's cool, too, because say you're a busy person who, Mm -hmm. you know, you have a lot going on. But okay, I've got a couple days free this month. I want to do something want to give back to my community, give back to my state, you can actually go on the calendar there and write, look at a certain day and it'll tell you the opportunities that day, correct? Yes, you definitely can do it. That's a great way to search. Or you can go to the opportunities, which are highlighted on the left side of the page, and then use the search function to search for whatever you're interested in. So if you want to be, if you want to know what's going on in Region 4 in Yuma or Region 3 in Kingman, you can search that way. And um, you can also search by a specific term. So let's say you want to work with fish, then you can just search by the fish opportunity. And you can become a fan of a program much like um, you can, you know, like something on social media. If you become a fan of a program as new opportunities are posted, you'll get emails to let you know that there's new opportunities available. And I would say check back frequently because we are really ramping up our field work right now. So we're going to have some really cool things coming up um, in the near future, and we're excited about that. So Any cool things you want to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Well, one thing I will say is that, um, you know, our adopter ranch work is really taking off. And so um, we have a staff member, Troy, who heads up that program. We also have some fence removal projects that will be coming up. Um, the sky is really the limit. Like, we are really going to, um, you know, have more things that are posted out there, I would say, in the next three to six months um, as, you know, we're we're working through some of the challenges associated with the pandemic. We're really happy to be able to engage volunteers back in the field. So kind of, you know, springtime, early summertime, things are really going to start to pick up a little bit more. Definitely. Yep. Um, And I know you kind of mentioned it there with, you know, whether you're in Yuma or Flagstaff. I mean, these are opportunities that are all over the state of Arizona. So it's not just, you know, happening in the Phoenix metro area. You know, whether you live in Phoenix or you live in Yuma or you live in Prescott Valley, wherever you may live, uh, there's probably something close to you. So if you want to travel, you can. But if you want to stay close to home, uh, that's an opportunity for you as well. 
definitely. I mean, it's a great way to have a volunteer vacation. You know, look at what's <laughs> going on. Um, you know, if you want to engage in teaching paddle sports classes, we have opportunities up at Lake Havasu, opportunities in Prescott, and opportunities here at Lake Pleasant or other area lakes. So, you know, if you are interested in sharing a specific skill, that's a really great way to get around and, you know, experience different parts of the state. Same thing with hunter education, or maybe um, you're part of a specific project that one of our biologists is leading, or or you really love the Adopt-A-Ranch program, or um, are passionate about a specific thing, you can you know kind of highlight that type of volunteer opportunity and then travel the state. And it's neat because you get to learn about places that you maybe don't have a lot of knowledge of or wouldn't otherwise go to necessarily. Well, especially if you're new to Arizona, mm-hmm. right? Maybe you've moved here uh, for a for a new career, but you know, from where you're coming from, you have a background in. Uh, paddle sports or water education or maybe you've retired here now to Arizona and like you said it's a great way to get involved and use your previous talent and maybe put it to work now for helping out people here. Yes um, you know our Ben Avery ranges really rely heavily on volunteers as part of their operation and you know it's amazing what the volunteers do here at Ben Avery. So they do everything from fix toilets to build targets to provide range safety here at Ben Avery. And so that's a really, I mean, we could not run Ben Avery without volunteer support. And we have volunteers that live on site six months out of the year. We have volunteers that live on site year round. We have volunteers that come in and help support programs like Home on the Range, um, where there's opportunities for families, youth, women, different groups to learn about shooting sports. Um, So, you know, that's a great example of there's we have a wide range of opportunities. And that's something that happens here in Phoenix. But then a lot of those volunteers will go out and engage in other projects throughout the state or teach you know shooting safety in other ranges throughout the state is there a uh beth uh, kind of a do you have like a cool success story when it comes to a specific volunteer or maybe a specific volunteer project something that's kind of uh just neat or unique that uh you've you've had over the years yes I actually had an experience this weekend, which I learned a lot about while I had an opportunity to assist in the event. So the um, Friends of the Ironwood Forest down in the Marana, Tucson area have been uh, working for several years to remove uh, harmful fencing for wildlife. And so the city of Tucson purchased um, some land and put up a new OH, a fence to keep OHVs out of their land. And in the process, we had, in some places, two or three fences that wildlife had to jump over in very close spaces or crawl under in order to travel through the wildlife corridor that runs from Saguaro National Park over to the Ironwood National uh, Monument. And so the goal of this particular group and the um, Coalition for Sonoran Desert Protection was to make travel safe for wildlife through the corridor. And so um, they were finally able to have their first volunteer event this past weekend with our highways team um, assisting and Saguaro National Park, um, the Arizona or the Mule Deer Foundation, and a number of different partners really came together and we were able to remove three, three miles of harmful fencing um, in four hours on a weekend. So wow. it was a great project because it's been all, all talked about for a long time and then to actually see it come to fruition. And now their plan is to have, this was a kickoff event, and now they plan to take down additional miles of fence or improve the existing fence to make it safer for wildlife. So there's a, a great momentum for that particular project. Well, and whether it's that project or one of the many that we've talked about today, I mean, it 
I, I don't know this sounds cliche, but it sounds legitimate, like the opportunities are endless, really, if you want to volunteer. They are. Another um, success story we have is uh, we've had a uh, particular member of our youth community who was uh, interested in working on an Eagle Spout, scr- uh, Scout project <laughs> with, I can't say it, Eagle Scout project with our fisheries, uh, our aquatic folks. And so um, this particular individual donated a ton of time to building fish habitats and organizing well organized like well organized events for fish habitat builds by a member of our youth community so they really they exist in every department within our organization and every program within our organization we are very fortunate to have some long-standing, very dedicated volunteers. And another great example of that is within our hunter education programs. I mean, I have met in the last couple of years and since I've been in this role, people who regularly come to me and say, I've been a hunter education instructor for 30 years. I've been a hunter education instructor for 40 years. I mean, (laughs) that's a long time and a long standing history. So we really are very grateful for every volunteer hour. But, you know, there are volunteers who have gone above and beyond and, and sometimes almost work a full time job supporting our wildlife conservation mission. Well, that's pretty impressive. It is, yes. Um, is there anything we've missed today, Beth? We've talked about a lot, but anything we didn't touch on that we should have? I think that the one final thought I would like to share is that it's not just about the resources in the field and the volunteers. So many of our um, fun, a lot of our funding comes from federal grants. So we, you know, we don't receive. Uh, funds from the state. So we're reliant on on different types of income. And one of those is the federal grant programs. And so we need volunteers and community engagement to support those federal grant programs in the form of in-kind match. And to state this very simply, some of our work equates to 26 to 30 dollars per hour for every hour that's spent in the field by by a volunteer which then support helps support our federal grant programs so we couldn't you know continue to to receive that federal funding without engaging the community and having the community support those federally funded grant programs and so um you know that is invaluable because not only do we have the resources to accomplish you know, a task on behalf of wildlife conservation, but then we also receive additional funding. And it's not just federal grant programs, there's other state grant programs and um, nonprofit organizations that, you know, require volunteer engagement in order to receive those funds. So over the years, you know, that's been an extremely critical component of the volunteer program. So thank you to everybody that's donated time because that makes you know, makes wildlife conservation possible. Absolutely. Thank thank you to all our volunteers out yes. there. Um, okay, we'll touch on it again. If people want to get involved, Beth, if they want to volunteer, they've heard a story, they've heard an opportunity today that sounds like it may be of interest to them, they should contact uh, our volunteer email or go to our website, right? Yes, definitely. So uh, just three quick ways, volunteer.azgfd.gov is our volunteer web page. Um, you can email us at volunteer at azgfd.gov and then you can check out the main website or you can stop by and talk to one of our staff members or existing volunteers at an event. Okay, come see us in person or volunteer at azgfd.gov or volunteer.azgfd.gov. Simple. Beth, thanks so much for being with us today. We appreciate it. Thank you for the opportunity. Thanks for listening. Visit us online at www.azgfd.gov.